Hey, what's what up? What up? What's going on? What's going on? So, uh, as you see, we are, we're going to test drive a live show tonight. Um, we have a really special guest, Baby Ike herself, a.k.a. J. Nicole, a.k.a. Miss Joanne Wiley. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we have a special... <laughs> I know she cussing right now. But we have a special uh, lineup tonight. Uh, today we're going to talk about the impact of the black... I want to say maid slash butler, because we have one guy in the mix uh, tonight also. Um, and we are going to um, discuss uh, just that impact, that image, uh, the good, the bad, and the actual, the reality of it. Because there's two sides, three sides of the story. And then we go kind of look at the uh, the whole spectrum of it. So how you been, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm ready to get it get it popping tonight. Welcome to the binge worthy podcast. That's what's up. That's what's up. Y'all know so what we, we do around here. Right. So we're gonna bring Miss J Joanne Baby Ike right into the mix. Not baby Ike. <laughs> baby Ike. <laughs> baby Ike. The baby Ike. So how you doing, Miss J Nicole? I, I don't know what to call you. J. Nicole, Jay I don't want to give out fine. your government. No, uh, no, I know, no. I know you got stalkers and such, but <laughs> how you no, doing? No, J. J. Nicole is still fine. I'm doing really well. How you guys doing? I'm good. I'm good. Playing. Uh, so hold on, we live, oh. baby. So y'all, y'all coming off? Y'all, y'all, um, y'all no, coming we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Y'all no, not, not doing that. that. Uh, uh-uh, uh, uh. Uh-uh. So you, you being fraudulent right now? So you trying to be? <laughs> I, gotcha. you know, hey yo, I I thought since we was live, like it's it's much better for the people to see you when you live. But I mean, I I, I can I I ain't gonna stunt on y'all. I got my new glasses and shit. I was trying to stunt when you said we was going live, baby. I'm okay, like, come through, Obama. <laughs> fresh, fresh cut, new glasses. I'm like shit. Like let's go. Come through, come through, Obama. Care, come through, come through. <laughs> uh, but uh, so. We got Jay Nicole with us. She is definitely a thespian of thespians. We've all uh, worked together a few times on some projects. Um, and who else would we bring on as a special guest for Jay Nicole? Now, I'm going to just let y'all know, she a little bougie. <laughs> and tonight's lineup was... I, we had to, right, we had to, I had to meet her in the middle with our bougie so I had to pick some some uh, films and TV shows that kind of kind of lend to her taste, if you will. And I appreciate it. So it's all good. <laughs> it is. It's cool. It's cool. But tonight I want to jump right into it. We're talking about maids, and we have some controversial movies and TV shows that depict the black maid and butler because we got Benson on the right, right on the, on the lineup as well. We ain't gonna leave our guys out. Hey, yo. Uh, but Go ahead. I got a question though. So mm-hmm. let me ask y'all something. Uh, mm-hmm. Which version of Imitation of Life did y'all watch? So for me, the one with Lana Turner, the second one, but it doesn't matter because okay. it's the same. Uh, it didn't I matter. watched the thirty fourth yeah. version, so I, I, I think, I think, yeah. All right, I just wanted to know. They um, didn't change I much. That's later, that's later right. in the conversation, but yeah, it's a couple different differences in the older version versus the second edition of it, but it's not so much that is a whole new movie. I mean, right. the, the biggest thing is they used uh, black and white and it was like sepia a little bit, but uh, the second version was definitely full out color. Right. Uh, but um, gotcha. but yeah, so it's not a, a big thing. Uh, we are doing a test drive, like I said, on our Facebook page on Binge Worthy Podcast. Definitely still tune in every Tuesday. We're going to see how this works out because we may switch it up a bit. But if you feel the need to comment, you can definitely comment. Um, I see a couple people are watching so far. So let's jump right into it so we don't bore them. Uh, so the first one is Gone with the Wind. We go, got a, we got a Lua, a Lua Yam saying to go along <laughs> with it. Remission of our sins. Amen. Woo! Just hold on and suck it. Mommy, here's the scarlet pickle. You can take it all back to 
kitchen. I won't need to buy it. Oh, yes, um, you is. You was going to eat every mouthful of this. Oh, I'm not. You put on the dress, because we're late already. What my lamb going to wear? There. No, you ain't. You can't show your bosom for three o'clock. I'm going to speak to your mom about you. If you say one word to mother, I won't eat a bite. Carol Stars. Well. Keep the show on your shoulder. I ain't even for you to get all freckled after buttermilk I done put on you all this winter. Reaching them freckles. <laughs> Now, Miss Scarlet, you come on and be good and eat just a little, No. Honey. I'm going to have a good time today and do my eating at the barbecue. If you don't care what folks says about this family, I do. I has told you and told you that you can always tell a lady but the way that she eat in front of folks like a bird. And I ain't aiming for you to go to Mr. John Wilkerson's and eat like a field hand and gobble like a hog. Ashley Wilkerson told me he likes to see a girl with a healthy appetite. What gentleman says and what they think is two different things. And I ain't noticed Mr. Ashley asking for to marry you. How <laughs> wasting this was crazy. I don't eat too fast. Ain't no need to have it come right back up again. Why does the girl have to be so silly to catch her husband? Colonel Adam, if you stop down here by the train, my coat is squeezing on without... I'm coming, Bob! One, two, three, four, five, four. Oh, oh, dear. My stay is so tight. I, I know I'd never get through there without belching. Man, I was about to I, say, we watching the whole movie? Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> that is my favorite movie. My favorite, favorite movie. You see, can so, I, can this I, is um, the, the baby Ike that I said that we had to meet in the middle. So um, <laughs> I guess I can be the tiebreaker on that. I had never seen this movie. Really? Yeah. Wasn't interested. Oh, wasn't interested <laughs> okay. At all. Um, you know, of course, growing up, you know, and I'm I'm sure that it was like one of those movies that might have been playing in the background or somebody was watching as like as a child. Mm -hmm. Like I seem to and, and I don't know if it's just because this movie lives in popular culture or or what. But I had never actually sat down and watched this film myself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, well, a couple things. I was um, really disappointed at how much I enjoyed it. <laughs> Well, and, and that's that's what we, we can't be conflicted anymore. One of the things that um, now has happened. So this movie, you can find it on HBO Max. For a moment, HBO Max took it down because it got a lot of backlash uh, because uh, it was out of context. So all of the movies, there's some old movies on HBO Max. But this movie, one one thing in, in terms of how much money it grossed hey, compared to... Hey, hey, real quick, just uh, let, I think we lost our guest. Yeah, she I think she got to come back in. She oh, probably, okay. uh, uh, there she go. Oh, okay. back, Jay? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. So I, I was telling, I don't know if you heard me. Um, I'd never seen this film. Mm -hmm. uh, I sat down to like actually watch it um, specifically for this. And I was telling Nate that I was actually quite ashamed of myself because I really enjoyed it. Like, it's a good film. Um, and I was really surprised that I enjoyed it as much as I did. Mm -hmm. So why do you like this movie so much, Jay? Well, yeah, I'm really big on, like, you know, big theatrics. So it's, like, just kind of like the <laughs> – just the overall – mood of the movie mm -hmm. Clark Gable I love him um the style of the movie it's just a to me it was just a really really good movie and to see I know like to, to see us as maids and things of that nature really like strikes a chord with most people and they're mm -hmm. like I don't want to I don't want to give it a try because right. I don't want to see us in that light but, but I, I never watched it 
I, I just I remember distinctively people making comments like in my vicinity, people making comments like it's a racist film. And, you know, I mean, and <clears throat> in my mental space as I got older, I was just like, well, I don't want to watch that shit. Right. Um, you know, so I sat down to watch it because obviously, you know, because for this for this particular episode. Um, and the other reason is it's, it's like four hours long. Yeah. And it's just really funny thing, yo. Like I started it on a Thursday night, and um, and I knew it was long. I like paused it. I was like, I'm gonna pick this up tomorrow. Didn't realize how little of it I'd actually watched. Right, so <laughs> it's really funny shit, yo. Like I'm sitting at home alone on Saturday, and it's me and my son, and we we're watching it, and it gets to that part where she's like. I will rise up. I will never be go hungry again as God is my witness. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is the end. And I'm like, oh, nope. oh that's the end of the movie. Okay, that was the cool. intermission. Yeah, that was it's a <laughs> half point mark. I was like, yeah. no, are you serious? Uh-huh. Um, but no, I'm with Jay. Like, I'm, you know, like I look, I I I thought that the film itself was beautifully shot. Mm-hmm. Um you know, like the characters and their motivations and whatnot, I thought was dope. Um, mm. and yo, I, I, yo, like, I enjoyed it from the perspective of just truth be told, yo, like, it's a war film without the war part to, oh, right. to a certain degree. It's like you see the effects of war, right? So, like, while wow. it came in trying to glorify the South, like, watching them go through shit, like how her father like lost his mind and they didn't even uh-huh. realize his wife was dead. I was like, oh, okay. So y'all motherfuckers wanted to go to war, and now y'all see what the shit really like. Y'all seeing it for what it really is. Um, there was an honesty in the film that um I enjoyed. I enjoyed that there was no real redemption for her. <laughs> like, you know, you can call what happened at the end sort of redemption, but she was pretty much a, like a dick, and she remained a dick and a selfish asshole through the whole movie. And I I respect that decision for your mm-hmm. main character. To like, you know, live or die on their on their characterization, um, and then the dude uh, I forget his name, but uh, I'm guessing because you mentioned Clark Gable, and I'm thinking Clark Gable is the guy that she was like pursuing her like halfway, like yeah, half right, hard, like, yeah, like no, nah, you're like yeah. like I don't know how you not like him, <laughs> like yeah, you know what I'm saying, like that was acting at its at its finest as far as I'm concerned. I I was really. Um, I was I was really surprised that I enjoyed it. Well, just a little bit of context to go along with this. As I was saying before, uh, it, this lives on I believe Amazon.com and HBO YouTube.com. Max. You, right, you can you can rent them off those two streaming sites, but it's also on HBO Max where you can watch it as a part of their um, lineup. It's recently been added back to HBO Max, and as I was saying, uh, it was uh, some controversy around it when it was taken down because people felt like, why are you putting this movie up about the antebellum South and this horrible depiction of black people in the midst of all this going on? So they took it down. And when you go to HBO Max now to watch it, there's a video that precedes the movie uh, with this beautiful black woman that comes on and gives you a little bit of context as to why she's there and why this movie was taken down and then put back up. Mm. So I thought uh, HBO Max did a great job of doing that uh, Mm. because uh, we often scowl, you know, we don't, a lot of people really don't like watching it, but they don't like the movie, but they'll watch it. And it's nothing wrong with us liking it because the three of us are actors. So we love it for that, that value in it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if for nothing else, the Hattie McDaniel, um, the Butterfly McQueen and all the other black people who were pivotal parts of this movie who um, get a bad rap in terms of being the maids. Um, mm-hmm. And I hate, I hate, I hate the scene where she says, I don't know nothing about birth and babies. I still to this day, I hate her voice in that. I hate the fact that that was her line. I hate the fact that they let that white woman slap her. Um, mm-hmm. And there was no buck back, but that we have to remember the context and the time period that it was. Mm-hmm. So, I think uh, they, uh, oh yeah. I think they, I think they chose her to be that type of character mm-hmm. because Mammy was, you know, was not. 
So right. I was like, okay, you know, we got one strong black lady in this mm-hmm. who was able mm-hmm. to kind of speak her mind and right. voice her opinions to the white folk. You know what I mean? Right. So, but it's like, okay, well, y'all can't have a whole bunch of them in there. So right. I mean, we need her in here to kind of be the ditzy one and, you right. know, not be. Oh, she was as, cringy. The bumbling fool. Yeah. Yeah. Bumbling, yeah. That, yeah. That one was, was, yeah, it was cringy. Like from the very intro, um, you know, yeah. should we have a conversation about that archetype before we actually discuss them in the vein of the films? I mean, well, like, that could the be, mammy, be the actual the butler, conversation. The, the help and 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 these like these like overly loyal African characters in film and television that we've mm-hmm. seen depicted in various stages. I think that. The- I think we should have the conversation throughout because each one of these films and TV shows shows a different side. And then how they differ, of the right? Story, okay, right? that's fine. So this that's this fine. is why this is the first one where we added video clips mm-hmm. to it because yeah. I wanted people to actually see them. Um, and I kind of wanted I went back and forth on whether I wanted to just show the actor or the actual scenes, but there were some scenes in some of these films and TV shows that were. Like as we all say now, problematic, cringeworthy. Mm. Yeah. But I think, especially with the two TV shows that we have, they they kind of were the tail end of many of these movies. Um, in terms of the Mammy character and the Step and Fetch character, um, uh, the Uncle Tom character, if you will. But I think the conversation will just lend itself to us talking about it throughout. So uh, we we. Are anonymous, uh, anonymous. I mean, in terms of us liking Gone with the Wind, but it is definitely still cringe worthy mm. <laughs> to watch this and see um, the the archetype of the black mammy, and it just. So uh, I didn't find I didn't find Hattie McDaniel cringe worthy. That yeah, the, yeah. the other the other mm-hmm. black characters I did, I was right. just kind of like shaking my head every time they, they came on screen. It just seemed very mm-hmm. step and fetching type um stereotypical roles. Right. Um the Hattie McDaniel role, I felt like you know, I'd seen it before, like the moral center. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the one, the 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 no nonsense kind of when everybody's losing their shit, she's the cool headed one who who kind of just the moral center just brings everybody like just dropping the 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 the, the uh words of wisdom, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like and not afraid to check the those white folks that she's like has the deeper relationships with, right? Mm-hmm. Um so I've seen that. I've seen that character archetype, archetype in in various films um, and uh, uh, medium, and and knowing that you know Hattie McDaniel was like right there at <clears throat> close to the beginning of kind of like the creation of that archetype. Um, so I, I I didn't you know I I I appreciated it for what it was mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. I, I understand. That those types of roles in that position, that that particular like subserving it position, right, um, were the only thing that was really available for black people at the time. And I, right. I don't, I find it really hard to like. I have heard the arguments around the personal attacks on those actors and actresses, right, right, from um, our own people. Like, yeah, from my own people, <laughs> and, and and honestly, yo, like I understand the arguments. I don't agree. I don't agree because I feel like, you know, with it being such a white dominated industry in this country that um, someone had to go first and going first don't always mean, Mm -mm, you know, I I feel like in a lot of, in a lot of instances, those of us who go first have, have, have it the hardest, right? Like, like, like we take the brunt of a lot of shit. Look at and, what's happening uh, to Monique, and then you see the Dave Chappelle, and you see the various people. So that's a great, that's, well, that's a great example. Like we see, you know what I'm saying? But I, I think that has more to do with patriarchy than race. Um, yeah. when you look at those two instances, but within the racial lens, you're absolutely right. I, I mm-hmm. think that you have one who steps up and says no, like yeah. this is not right, and 
I'm not going to accept this. None of you talking to their people, none of you should accept this shit. Right. And the first person to put themselves out there, the first person to, to involve themselves are usually the ones that carry the brunt of like whatever like the negative aspect is like mm -hmm. they're going to catch it the heaviest. Right. And then the people that come behind them because of that example that's already been set. And that whole strength in numbers concept, Lord, like now, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that first person like pads the way for everybody else. So like, I think that's a perfect example. I don't yeah. think, I don't think we get Dave Chappelle and his victory with the Chappelle show without yeah. Monique throwing yeah. herself out there and saying, this is not right. And I'm going to address it. Right. And, and even with this movie winning so many awards um, we can't let it be said that one of the most controversial awards was Hattie McDaniel winning uh, 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 an Oscar for her performance. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, it it kind of is a double-edged sword in, the, in, in terms of it was monumental because she was the very first. Mm -hmm. But right. her portrayal in the movie was very subtle. And I'm, I'm kind of side-eyeing the director like, he allowed her to be such a strong force while still showing such a weak force. It, it was a moment in the movie where uh, they were, it was like a, a transitional scene where two of the, two of the black guys were fighting over who was going to say we done for done what work for the day. And I was like, it, it was like little things like that, but then mm -hmm. they gave Hattie McDaniels these, mm -hmm. these like tough, you know, able scenes where she was able to go back and forth with the characters, but then you see something like that. So I'm like, where are we at with with helping us along? Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of the leadership on that cast. But um, I, I I still love the movie. It was it's still hard to watch it um, because you know she played the victim white lady so well. She should have got way more awards, but it it just. It still it hurts because we know that this is factual information, even mm -hmm. though this is fictional, a fictional account. But it's still this is really what happened to our mm -hmm. ancestors. So it, it's still hard watching it from that lens. But in terms of being an artist, I see the value and just uh, it was great to have that big of a cast and everything looks so seamless. So I, I liked it. Um, we good? Yeah, I'm good on I'm I'm good on this one. Um, I th I, I think everybody should watch this at least once. Yeah, um, at least once. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a well done film. Um, outside of you know where we were as a culture and as a people in that in that at that point in time. Yeah. And like you can't fault people for that, yo. Like, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like, black people should never take take the blame for white supremacy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the fact all. that no. Hollywood wasn't allowing that, like the fact that Hollywood was not down for casting us in like leads and 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 substantial like heavy roles at that time, um, right. <clears throat> and only leaving like a very small space for us to like flex. Is like mm -hmm. absolutely not the fault of any black person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was Gone with the Wind. Uh, take a look at it. Watch it not for 2020 eyes um, and not for even 1820 eyes, but just watch it um, and just notice what you had not noticed before. Notice how they gave uh, Hattie McDaniel a lot of uh, freedoms while still, you know, kind of pushing down the other characters. But that was Gone with the Wind. Um, I gave Miss Baby Ike her moment. <laughs> her you moment. Call me Baby Ike. <laughs> her moment. But the next one, so this was one I added at the very last minute. Um, and it's called New Orleans. Um, and because Billie Holiday is, is getting a documentary, a biopic right now, not a documentary, a biopic, I wanted to kind of add this in because people don't know that she did, uh, she was in a few movies um, in mm -hmm. her career towards like the 
in like the middle of her career, she did a couple movies. And of course, they used us as entertainment. And it was kind of like the what we would consider now hiring the the puffy to do a movie uh or do a play. It it was to bring in audiences, but a lot of these movies, like this movie, New Orleans, when the people down south saw this movie, those characters and those things were omitted from the movies. They would not play them in the movie theaters with uh, Billie Holiday acting in it mm. they oh, wow. or, or singing in it. They would cut those parts of the movie and add it. Uh, and take them out, and then up north they were able to play the entire movie in its entirety. But um, that that was definitely uh, one of the movies that it, it was. It, it showed her like I would never have. She was too strong of a character for her to ever play a maid. But it's definitely is is cringy to watch her. And I, I keep using that word, but these movies that we watch. But this episode still made me cringe a little bit because you like Billie Holiday is made. I don't see it. And then she had, of, of course, uh, she was in there with Louis Armstrong. But it was it was it was a, have good, a choice. Well, I'm just saying they, those it was it was about the entertainment, the music value. Yeah. But she right. still played a maid in it. And it was like, mm -hmm. damn, like that was the only thing that they would let us do up until a certain point. And it just didn't mm -hmm. it didn't. It just didn't do me right. So I think I have a little clip that kind of um, shows it a little bit. Whatever black person says, my favorite movie is Gone with the Wind, they need to sit down and talk to somebody. <laughs> the history of the Civil Nicole. War is not reflected in that movie for me anyway. The African-American audience often feels very conflicted. I mean, it can applaud the performance of Hattie McDaniel in Gone with the Wind, but we are not really being given another kind of definition of these characters. Come on in here! Come on! I remember as a child cringing every time they came on screen. <laughs> every time they came on screen. Um, whether it was Hattie McDaniel, Oscar Polk. Who's mm -hmm. my milk that mm -hmm. time, Miss Scarlett? We as houseworkers. That, I, yo, I, I almost stopped right oh, there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See? This is Butterfly <laughs> Before What is it, Prissy? Every time Butterfly McQueen or some of the lesser characters as slaves had a moment on screen. Quitting time. Uh, Who says it's quitting time? Who it said it's quitting time? I was the foreman. I was the one says when it's quitting time at Tara. Quitting time. And how much like do we see that in our interactions the today? And, and Jaws. Mm. <laughs> it was it was that way for me. All of them, you know. Because of the roles that they played, because the characters that they played were so far away from any black person I had ever seen or had known. It wasn't until later on when Donald Bogle wrote his book and began to really analyze and put these performances in context that I began to, you know, see them in a, in a different kind of light and began to really appreciate the artistry. Of, of, of the performances uh, later on uh, with Hattie McDaniels, uh, uh, for instance. Atlanta. Savannah would be better for you. You just get in trouble in Atlanta. What trouble are you talking about? You know what trouble I was talking about. I was talking about Mr. Ashton Wilkes. He'll be coming to Atlanta when he gets his leave. So that, that, I just wanted to play a little bit more of that because mm. one, the clips from um, New Orleans was a bunch of music and I'm not paying... Oh, okay. um, I'm not paying yeah. you two for music, but yeah, yeah. we're going to go on to the next film and I'm going to play the clip first and then we can talk about the, the actual film. And it's a, uh, a long walk. Southern housewife. She's the perfect family housekeeper. Thank you, Odessa. Two women who live by the conventions of their time. But something is about to happen that will change the lives of these two women forever. That bus is as empty as my grave. If you won't ride the bus, Mr. Thompson doesn't see why I should have to suffer. 
I asked you to suffer, Miss Thompson. I don't want no trouble. Hit him! No! You tried to ride the bus and that's why his face looks like that. What's wrong with you? If you give in, what do you think is going to happen to this city? These are the people that you said couldn't count to ten. You're going to go to one of their meetings? I'll make up my own mind now. Join any damn group I please. Get away from my car. No, you get away from your car. I'm a little scared. What's scaring you, Miss Thompson? Who you are? Who Mr. Thompson wants you to be? Yeah, I am trying to hold my head up as a white man in this town, and you're caught in a nigga maid. At a time in America when everyone did what was expected, two women had the courage to do what was right. When it's all said and done, People are going to look at you, Miss Thompson, and they're going to say that you were part of this. Sissy Spacek, Whoopi Goldberg, The Long Walk Home. Ah, uh, um, that, that trailer was cringy. Yeah. Yeah. So, what did y'all think about this movie? So I remember watching this a while ago, mm-hmm. like a long time ago. So, but I had to rewatch it because I can't remember everything. Yeah. And just watching it and living in now, <laughs> and still seeing the same things going on, it just kind of put me. It made me sad. I liked the movie, but it just mm-hmm. made put put me in a place of just. We've come. Where have like have we gotten anywhere? You know, yeah. and just. Just with We're everything, still with the, the same fight. yeah. Well, we can ride the bus. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we can ride the bus. That's about all we can do. Um, at so like moment. for anybody who does who who doesn't know, this is about the Montgomery bus boycott. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so it, it's it's that story is told through these two women. Um, Whoopi Goldberg plays the maid for a white family. Mm-hmm. And you know, like you know, it's funny. Like in the biopic from last episode, Nate, mm-hmm. this was very, very much similar to Ghosts of Mississippi. Yeah, right. Because yeah. although, although the Montgomery boycott um, is the backdrop and is like the setup for the story, right. the focus really in on is really on this white woman, and 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 whether whether or not like. Like it's really about it's another movie that's really about white people changing, but it's, like, it's different though. It's, their stance, so this change. is a little bit different though because no, and, yeah. I, and I see that. But this one, I love this movie so much. One because I'm the biggest Whoopi Goldberg fan ever, <clears throat> but also even though the story kind of centers around this white family and and Whoopi Goldberg is a like a pivotal part of that. It puts the responsibility on them. Like, okay, what you gonna do? Yeah. What, oh, yeah. what are you Absolutely. gonna do with with what you see in front of you? Absolutely. One of the worst scenes. And I love that scene. Yeah. I love that scene where <laughs> Whoopi is almost telling her, like, mm-hmm. I don't know if you really want to get involved in this. Like, I don't right. think you thought this through. And like what this is gonna cost you. Cause even though, like, that's that's literally what she was saying. Mm-hmm. Like, look. We gonna do this. I be like, she's speaking for the black people. Like, we gonna do this regardless, right? But if you do this, like, let me let me try to warn you of like what's gonna happen, uh-huh. right? Like, like what what's gonna happen to you is something that I've been dealing with. I thought that was such a powerful scene because honestly, what she was telling her was like, whatever comes out of this ain't gonna be nothing new for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm black, and this is this is how we've been treated. Right. And, and this is what we go through on a day to day. But mm-hmm. if you make the decision mm-hmm. to come out here with us, yeah, like this is going to be new for you, and you could lose everything. You could lose but, your husband. You could lose your, right your way of life. All of that. But look I, at I how pivotal. Scene. Look at how pivotal these maids and butlers were in these people's lives. And I don't think we really understood that fully until the butler came out. Um, and we and he actually physically said it like he they have a job in being the maiden butler that is just as significant as the Martin Luther King or the person that's on the front line with the picket sign. 
they they because they are often the person that carries the information the the inside information back to those organizations those black right. organizations mm-hmm. and i that was one of the that's one of the reasons why i <laughs> do like movies about the maid because we often look at them as the the buffoons but they had such a pivotal move of role in this one of the wor- worst scenes in this movie that i love the most was when they were sitting around the table where they had to work for them for that christmas and the oh, lady yeah. was talking about like just the word nigger like it, it mm. just yeah. like yeah. it still hurt it hurts in a different way because they mean it they mean it and it's no i didn't know that it had that much weight or they know what they're saying and yeah, it was still, yeah. it, it was cringy to watch all of them be so uncomfortable with that one lady talking, but they mm-hmm. all agreed And no with one her. would say anything. No one, no one, no one knows said anything. The to defend, like even, like, okay, let's say it happens completely behind closed doors, right? right? That's one thing. But I distinctively got the impression that everybody was really uncomfortable because, even even through all the bullshit that they try to, you know, white people try to betray, like you, you can't have that some someone that close to your family for that long and not care about them, right? right. Like not have a genuine e- emotional reaction to like when they're in pain, when they hurt, things like that, right? Like so, she, everybody was aware that Whoopi's character was like literally right behind this woman as she's saying these horrible things, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so. Was it, or, or like, was the uncomfortability about the word nigga, or the comfortability was about the fact that you're saying it's the embarrassment, and, and she's right behind you, and right. even she looked a little embarrassed, right? Like she had to, she got to had to reassert herself, like, I, well, I, I, I mean it, I, I right. mean what I say, you know what I mean? But, but, but in her facial expressions, like you could tell that even right. she was like, oh, I wish I'd have known she was behind me. I maybe I not, maybe I wouldn't have said that that way. You know what I mean? But just the audacity, the audacity. How did you how did you feel about this movie, Jay? I really liked the movie. Um, I just it, it's just kind of one of those things you have those you have people who want to be your allies, and then you have those who don't want to be your allies, and. Right. You know, well, I think for not to be she married. not to be ally. exactly because I believe, be I believe married. her. I believe her husband really didn't want to go that route, but I yeah. believe like his manhood was being tested. So he was like, "Okay, well, I got to stick with <laughs> with my white boys, and mm-hmm. I got to ride out with them and be against you in Odessa." You know, but so well, I go ahead. No, go ahead. What, you, what were you going to say? I said what hurts the most when you speak about the husband, there's a scene like right before the Christmas is it's is he's taking them to see the development that he's overseeing. Right. And the he street tell, street. Right. He tells them that he named a street after the wife and the two daughters and how years down the line they can have they can know that people are going to be living on a street named after them. And just the audacity to be able to give the gift of legacy to your children in such a minuscule way and just, you know, just because you can do it and not understand why other people want the same thing for their children. Why wouldn't you think we would want the same thing? And then I'm noticing in a lot of these films is a through line of us being lazy. Mm-hmm. And that always, always is inserted always. in this. That's like, the most persistent. While I'm working for you, you're calling mm-hmm. me lazy. Because mm-hmm. I want the same leisures and luxuries that you have and that you think you deserve. So I'm lazy for wanting those luxuries. Yeah. And you're not lazy for wanting those luxuries. Right. Well, I mean, I, like, like that comes out of that through line of Black people being less than human. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Like, like, um, it's particularly today. Like, because we don't get that today, right? It's a lot of respectability politics thrown in there, mixed with you know the the trending thing is like, oh, I'm not racist. I don't have anything against black people, and so it, it's not as overt as our ancestors had to deal with, right? But like, the truth is, yo, like. That byline exists through all of these films because mm-hmm. that by, because the, the the prevailing 
feeling amongst white folks was that you are lesser, right? right. Like you are, right. it wasn't, it, it wasn't even like they, I don't even feel like they honestly believed that we were lazy. I think what they were saying was like, with, with their laziness was tied to what we were willing to do for them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, like they, 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 they caught us lazy when we decided that we were going to do something for ourselves. Right. right. As opposed right. to our lives being so solely focused around making sure that they were comfortable, making sure that they were well taken care of. Right. The like, fact that we wanted as, what they had. Right. So like you, y'all you seen the meme, they've been calling black people lazy ever since we decided we weren't working for free no more. Right. Like, right. That mm -hmm. byline is directly tied to their idea of supremacy, right? Like that they are the master race and that black people are a secondary class that should serve them. And, and, and mm -hmm. that's what it's really tied to. That's what it's really tied to. And like, even if that's not your explicit express, like conscious belief, it's been going on for so long that just like we talk about like black anti-blackness and the, how it's like rooted in the subconscious. Well, mm -hmm. it's the same thing on the other side, right? Like you may not look at a black person and 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 have like that venom in your like on the surface that, mm -hmm. that we used to have to endure, but right. it's so deeply rooted in the subconscious. So today. It's not that your feelings have changed. It's just that you've been trained to kind of like push that back into the subconscious, which means that it comes out in these very like um, what they call it. Um, you know, it, it comes out differently. It's right. not it's not in your face. They're not as bold as they used to be. Microaggressions, right? Like it comes mm -hmm. out in the microaggressions yeah. and like the the stances that you take that you in your mind makes sense. But you don't realize that are really deeply rooted in this idea that you are better, that you yeah. really believe deep down in your soul that you are better than yeah. people who are not white. So that was a long walk home. And first of all, let's let's just not act like you know a uh, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Angela Bassett, or Cicely Tyson didn't kill the game with their biopic contributions uh, to our black absolutely. cinema and films. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I like but, this movie if if, mm -hmm. if for no other reason that, um, again, like, you know, you hear about the Montgomery bus boycott, right? Like, mm -hmm. we've all heard about it. We've all read about it. We've had very limited information. To see a, a significant portion of this film, unlike Ghosts of Mississippi, focused mm -hmm. on the black family, right? Whoopi's right. family. Right. Like, you get to see our family multiple times in multiple yeah. various situations and iterations, and we right. watch them go through this. So to watch how that boycott yeah. affected them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The 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 scene in the movie that moved me the most was when uh, the the first day of the boycott, and she woke mm -hmm. up early and she ran out to the porch. And the empty bus, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Like for me, that was such a powerful scene mm. because, like, I think about here in Baltimore, and a lot of us as black folk have been complaining about the MTA for a long time, right? right. And imagine, like, for me, I just put myself in those shoes. Like, imagine if we got fed up to the point that like you standing on the five bus line or the 15 bus mm -hmm. line or the 23 bus line. And I know okay, they ain't you, no you old man. We right. Know, right. We right. Know. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine those buses you know, like, don't even exist. Know, no more. You know that five to Sedonia through Johns Hopkins is oh, back to the brown. Right. You know what I'm saying? And From imagine Mondome that bus on five right. is like four <laughs> white folks on the bus and that's it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I felt that. I, I really felt well. That, we saw that, that throughout it. this pandemic that we were in, and across the country, many bus lines were forced to let passengers ride for free because so many people stopped riding the bus due to COVID nineteen. Right. So we saw a glimpse of that, but we didn't take into consideration we did that. We didn't. Right. Yeah, we didn't like take it, that yeah, into that's a pandemic. That's not us. Mm -hmm. Like to see that in Montgomery and like a lot of people don't know. And I, I be telling people like this when they be talking about boycotts don't work. I be like, yo, like, nigga, y'all don't even know. Like the bus boycott in Montgomery almost broke the almost broke 
and destroyed the Montgomery bus company. Like well, they were, local, they were nearing bankruptcy. They were nearing bankruptcy. Yeah. Like, I don't think people understand it. Like mm-hmm. they kind of tell it to us in school. Like, Oh, we, you know, black people just stopped riding the bus because they didn't, yeah. you know, they didn't, they, didn't, they weren't able to sit here and they did that. And they went on for X amount of time. And then, you know, they frame it almost like white people changed their mind. No, no. they almost destroyed an entire mm-hmm. regional bus company. That's why it got so violent in the beginning and in that, the middle. Yeah. Because like, they like were trying to scare us into that. doing it. When they right. talk about the Montgomery bus boycott, like what really happened that mm-hmm. changed things? Oh, well, like a company almost went completely out of business. Like white men were losing their jobs. They were being sent home early. They mm-hmm. were being asked to stay home because there was no work for them because these bus lines that were like 80 in a, in a town that was 80, 75 to 80% black. And they mm-hmm. all said, we're not riding the bus. We're going to walk. We're going to carpool. We're going to do whatever we got to do, but we're not going to take your bus. And it right. literally almost bankrupted the Montgomery bus company. So it should really show us just the power we have when we, when we say we're going to do something. It should definitely show us that because even in this, you see there were people who like the daughter or the friend. Well, the friend didn't. The friend, the other maid that worked with her, she didn't catch the bus. She got a ride. But the mm-hmm. daughter was like, man, I, I'm i about to get on this bus. You know, this the, 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 the frustration of getting tired, the sacrifice of it all. People, we're not today. We aren't really willing to sacrifice our comforts in order to make something happen. And you see that in certain cases, but in most cases, we look right now, people are refusing to sit still and figure out life from the comforts of your home. Right. Opposed to, I gotta get out there and do something. I gotta be entertained. I gotta go out to eat dinner versus, no, I'm gonna figure out how to make this work for me and save that money so when the doors open up, I'm going to be, you know, but we see people doing it. But for the most of us, it's hard for people to sacrifice. Mm. But that was a long walk home. Please watch it. It is one of my favorite biopics um, ever next to lean on me. But it's, it's one of my favorites because um, just the calmness that Whoopi had throughout this showed us what is necessary for us to really focus on when we're in these types of moments. So uh, the next one we have up is Benson. This is our guy, Butler, the maid. What people don't realize is uh, this was a spinoff of a TV show called Soap, um, and he played a butler in the soap. He played a butler in Benson in the beginning, but his character worked his way up to possibly being the next governor of the state that they were in. And I think the subtlety of it all um, was people missed it because they just saw him as the butler throughout the whole thing. But they don't realize his actual position changed and he grew at, uh, as the show went on. So I'm going to show mm-hmm. a clip of that as well. So I got to remember to put my glasses on so I can <laughs> see myself. <laughs> Oh, that's not that's the wrong She's one. the proper Ooh. Southern housewife. Sorry. She's the perfect. I think I erased it. Uh, da, 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 da. Give me one second. I thought I had it going on, but, you know, there we go. I wanted Benson to uh, embody the American dream, and that is that you go from one place to another to another, to another. And it seemed to me, I wanted the arc of the character to start one place and end up in another place. And I I really wanted sociologically, I mean, I always had these pretensions. Sociologically, I wanted African Americans to see or to feel that it was possible to start as a butler and end up, it was perfectly logical because we knew he was an intelligent man. We knew he was witty, we knew he was sharp. So why shouldn't he develop that? And so I went to night school, which we mentioned several times in the script, and I went to law school. 
And so it was quite understandable that I would end up uh, being someone who could be considered for lieutenant governor. And I went by stages from butler to head of household affairs to uh, uh, budget director to lieutenant governor. And our last episode was I was running for governor. There wasn't any resistance to the idea. Uh, it was just something I said, well, you remember now, we've got to put in so-and-so and so-and-so, and, so and, so, and we've got to uh, do this, we've got to upgrade this character. And I remember thinking also and telling them at the time that you can't make the governor too silly. I mean, we had to guard against the relationship between Benson and Krauss always worked. There was a certain kind of naturalness to it. It was kind of natural that we might be enemies and we would have some fun with that. Uh, the other characters took a bit of uh, uh, juggling and whatnot. For instance, with the governor, we I had to tell them, don't make the governor too silly. Because if the governor is too silly, then what am I doing here? Who am I? I have to be silly right along with them. So the governor has to stand for something. He can be a he can be perceived as a bit of an airhead, but he has to have, his ideas must have some substance. So that um, interesting. So what did y'all? Yeah. So this was the first TV show that we watched. I'd never seen it. What did you think of it? Well, I'll say this. Uh, <clears throat> it's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. You have to pay for it. Or you can watch it on YouTube. And I was like... Wow. <laughs> and I, <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I believe in paying people for their work. That's another okay. conversation. Okay. But, you know... Uh, but then, no, the episodes were like $1.99. Oh. Um, they only have the for they only had episode I mean um season one on, yeah. on Amazon available right now and it went on for seven years so it went I on for seven like years seven seasons mm -hmm. so my overall thoughts about Benson <laughs> I watched I was like I'm not paying from the whole first season I, I paid a dollar <laughs> I paid a dollar ninety nine for episode one I watched the first episode mm -hmm. and then I immediately purchased season one okay. Um, the first thing I thought when I finished the first episode, I was like, yo, what year did this come out? <laughs> so I did a little research uh -huh. and, uh, it, it started, the Benson came out in 79, Yeah, uh -huh. uh, but the character would have been, I think what a uh, soap started, I think in 76 or 77. Yeah. Like the then, early to mid seventies. He was on soap for two years before his character spun off into mm -hmm. his own show. Yeah. Right. Um, so 1979, um, I guess that's, I mean, I guess that's a, a good year for Benson, right? Because the first thing that, the, the reason why I was looking for the year that they came mm -hmm. out was because I was like, yo, this seems incredibly ahead of its time yeah for the time okay. period even though i would i didn't know i didn't know exactly what year it was i just knew it was old i knew it was it it, it predated me for by a ways um i thought like yo you'd be hard i mean i guess you could find it today it's it's easy but like back then i think you've been hard pressed to find a, any any black person on television that interacted with them white folk the way benson did mm -hmm. right that from the very first episode he was he was like in a black way, like right. a black intelligent way. Like he was shitting on them, and I was like, "Yo, like, you know." It was almost mm -hmm. like, um, it was almost, you know. I had the same reaction to the first episode of Benson that I had to Papa Pope. If y'all remember that season and um, that episode, in like it was like season four of Scandal called a door marked exit, where he rips into Fitz, the president, right? He calls uh -huh. him boy repeatedly. Like throughout mm. this monologue that he does, right? And he repeatedly calls the president of the United States boy. I remember thinking to myself when I saw that first episode, I was like, "Nigga, somebody at NBC done lost their job." Like, who? 
What white person, like somebody approved this script approved and they that? must not have known that this shit was about to get real live, right? And that's how I felt about Benson. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, like to watch that first episode and to watch, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like he had a very understanding relationship with the daughter, but she's a child, so I get that. But mm -hmm. then outside of the fact that his title was butler it was very clear from very from episode one that like i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to lead this shit or these motherfuckers ain't gonna make it but right. that was my point that saying, was really look, at, look at the relationship to the maids and the butlers yeah I it was really with the family. It was they had a lot of power and it was genuinely it was like genuinely funny mm -hmm. like they had shit that they had shit in the first episode of benson that i I was like, oh, that's 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 a little risque. Like, that's racist. But then it yeah. would come back around later. Like, the joke would come back around later, and then Benson would capitalize on it. And mm -hmm. I was like, yo, this is... I thought well, they, they... You know, they chose him for this role because... Well, they chose him for the role of Soap and and, and gave him this because of his role in Pearly and the fact that he oh, paid wow. Pearly. So, mm -hmm. and people don't know, he, he was one of the original uh, cast in Pearly. Uh, so the fact that he played that character, that that just led to this. So this is Pearly. If he was, this would have been Pearly. Minus he would have probably set some fires and shit, but right. this was <laughs> Pearly in this, him playing Pearly. Okay. Like a more well-rounded Pearly character so that in makes, actual that makes life. total sense. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like it was just I, you know, I knew that it was an older show, but seventy nine mm -hmm. isn't that old, really. Not you at know all. what I mean? So, and and then when you think about what transpired in the sixties and seventies, it's like okay, like mm -hmm. it makes sense that right. this happens now, but I still feel like it 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 was it definitely. Mm -hmm. This is the one where I can say, like, okay, he's the butler, but he is definitely not playing the stip mm -mm. the stereotypical right. archetype of like mm -hmm. that butler mammy role that mm -hmm. we've come to know. And that's this what was, was so nice about very it. Very different, yeah. and it was very special in the way that it was handled. Yeah. Have you um, seen this before, Jay? Yeah, I've watched Benson before, but like uh -huh. George was saying, like it's it it's refreshing not to have the shucking, you know, like yes, sir, no, sir, uh -huh. yes, ma'am, you know, and to have a someone who has a title of a butler, but his mm -hmm. intelligence and you know, just being able to maneuver his way through life and mm -hmm. yeah, I I really love Benson. <laughs> yeah. And it it this it it really so his connection with Pearly is it made this make sense for me. It it uh it allowed me to not even look at the white characters at all and just watch his growth through it. Um, and I'm a, as we promote this week for this show, I'm going to release some of the clips that we, that we watched today. Uh, because you see in his interview that we played uh, before this, um, they tried him. They, they put him in situations where they were not paying him what he would be, what would be comparable to the other actors. So they tried him. He got a lot of flack from white America because they didn't. They never saw this character in a man, a black male character. Maybe mm -hmm. they let you know Florida Evans get away with it, or you know certain characters, but they never let black men get above themselves in that way. Um, and 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 what would be considered above themselves? I mean, uh, they they literally came in mm -hmm. from episode one, yeah. And like to read that he eventually becomes lieutenant governor. Even and though I haven't seen that far yet, and then and then the season, the, the series ends with him yeah. running for yep. governor of yep. the state, right? But right. in episode one, they establish yep. that he's smarter than the governor. Yeah, like yeah. He, he literally yeah. solves the like solves an entire problem, like unbeknownst to the governor mm -hmm. in the very first episode. Yeah, so like, as so, the butler though. As, as the, the butler, butler, right? Mm -hmm. As the butler, he's challenging all of these other white folks all mm -hmm. the way up to um, the butler. The one thing that disappointed me was that um, the chief of staff, the governor's chief of staff, yeah, he was he was almost he was he like was the antagon antagonizer, and but he was very he he had a very racist undertone, and I thought yeah. they should have kept that. So they recast him. 
Mm-hmm. And the, they recast him, so it's a different actor playing him in the second episode. Right. Yeah. And even though he's still an antagonist for Benson, yeah. he, his, his yeah. antagonization is not racially motivated. Where in right. episode one, it absolutely it was. was. And I was so looking forward to see the two those two characters go back and forth because it was the only one that seemed to be like had an issue with the fact that he was black. Other and that's than probably the why they replaced it. That's probably right. why they replaced and I, it. And I, I really wish they had. Kept, I really wish they had kept with that. I don't think I would have loved to have seen that play out on screen. Would have lasted. I don't think the show would have lasted that long had that been the the underlying, you know, kind of platform that it was sitting on. Mm-hmm. Because I think, and I think if you it, look at his interviews. He did not want he his integrity as a black person and as a black performer was intact. And at the time, right. he was a big celebrity, so he was able to get a lot of the things that he wanted for this show specifically. So you so, saying that like he did not want that? As a, I would, I, I wouldn't say he didn't want that, but I would okay. say probably test audiences probably were very white America or white people who probably did the test shows. We're yeah. probably very uncomfortable with that white character being that in the time that they were in. This was the 70s. So th- yeah. it was no longer uh, sit down where in the back of where. Uh-uh. Right. right. So and like, he, he was wasn't overtly racist like that. He, the actor who yeah. played him was very, mm-hmm. I thought it, because I feel like that's a delicate balance to strike for an actor yeah. where mm-hmm. you're not being. Racist and set, but the racist undertone of like your position is like right there. Natural, it was natural. And so I didn't think it was overt. I thought that it was. I I just thought it was a nice. I thought it added a little, a little weight to the show. Uh huh. So as I as I continued to watch like seasons two, three. I mean episode two, three, four. I think I'm on like the sixth episode now, and I watched those two characters interact. (laughs) I'll be turning you on, sir. Like I'll be. I'll oh yeah, be you definitely put me on with this one. I'm. I, I can't even front. I can't even. Front. Well, like I had first, any first Carmen well, Jones, then the Wiz. No. Now, okay, so now Nate, Nate, let me just be honest. I hadn't seen any of this shit before. Right, like, I right, started, like I hadn't seen any of these movies, and I hadn't seen Benson. All right, mm. so so yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, but uh no, I I uh I thought that it was a nice dynamic because I think that mm. um I'm not uh I think that they like you know what I'm saying like okay so to put it in into, into the, today's terms I'm not a big fan like I'm not on with the count cancel culture yeah however okay. ha- however because and I'm not with it because I feel like sweeping things under the rug just sweeps things under the rug. Mm -hmm. And then we just Mm -hmm. gonna put it under the rug and act like it's not there. Right. Right. Like I think that and history is history. You can't change it. Addressed. (laughs) Right. Like I think I think these things need to be addressed. And I thought they missed an opportunity to address some of the racial tension. Racial tensions and issues between the black and white races through this dynamic. You know what I mean? Yeah. They they yeah. still made that character an adversary to Benson, but it was less racially motivated. It was more of a of a, of a battle of wits between. But them. you know that that's that's in in the art. You know that's normally their first reaction. We've all worked in probably a white space in the arts, and that's normally their first reaction to kind of water it down a little bit. Let's yeah. let's mm-hmm. let's tablespoon it to them. We don't want to. We we don't want to you know whenever there's a I, I just did pearly and the white characters in it were very timid of even today about playing these characters because it's it is people don't want to be seen that way anymore even though they may think that way mm-hmm. nobody right. wants to be called racist because that that means I'm doing something wrong so mm-hmm. you know it's and not every white person is racist but. That is naturally in them. And the character, yeah. I, in watching that first episode again, that character wasn't overtly racist. It's just when you're in a, a leadership role, that is, you are, you the butler. Why are you talking to me? Exactly. Go watch something. Go right. wipe something down. And that was, that's why his character, it was so important for him, for his character to grow. So when they were still talking to him that way, 
he had something to then stand on. No, I'm in school right now. I'm I'm going to be your boss soon. So right. that's that attitude. And white people are very uncomfortable with that. And it is I I love Ben. I was I had a great grandmother, so definitely I watched Benson. Uh or it was repeats by the time I was watching it, but it was it was another show. So now we now what we about to go into right now is my territory, like you can clearly tell, I was raised by somebody's great grandmother. Yes, because... <laughs> yeah, because I couldn't find this shit nowhere. <laughs> because um, I had to go off a memory. I was give, like, okay, I remember me, watching it. If you talking so, about give me a break, <laughs> give me a break. Well, give me a break was kind of the sister show to Benson. It was a little bit late. It was more eighties than seventies, uh, but it was kind of the sister show to Benson because. Um, the Nell Carter, who is like life to me. I love Nell Carter the same way I love uh, Whoopi Goldberg, and I regret never being able to actually meet her or see her perform. Uh, but uh, Nell Carter uh, was was stereotypically put into this role, and many people hated her because they felt like she was being the new age mammy in that moment. And this look at, we were in the middle of the 80s when oh, this show was coming on. So it's not gonna fly. It's not gonna fly. So this right. one scene is, I'm gonna let us watch this scene. And it's, 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 it was like one of the racial moments in this piece, which was very few in between. So here you go. Samantha, get out. Samantha, get out. church because of what I did? No, honey. But they'll probably make me sit in the parking lot doing Sunday service. <laughs> Can't God hear you from the parking lot? Oh. Well, honey, I got a Bible study that says he oh, got you. Jesus. Guess now I'm going to get that chance. Samantha! You know, are you going to hit her? I know. What do you want? Look at what you did to this this show went for the comedy more than the the drama or the seriousness. I wash your face. I want to talk to Samantha alone. Samantha? Don't you dare eat cottage cheese while I'm yelling at you. What's the matter? Didn't all your church friends love cute little Joey? This has nothing to do with Joey. This is between you and me. No, it's not. All you care about is Joey. Joey's report card. Joey's. Son, Lord, I wanted Joey's to smack her. Dead. Okay. Uh, I, I wanted her. <laughs> I wanted her to slap her. Oh, father. He is. Don't you dare start crying on me. I never thought that I would live to see the day when you would use the word nigger. Oh. Mm. No, that's horrible. I would never say that. Well, you might as well have. Because that's what you did by putting Joey in blackface. You offended me and a lot of other decent black people. I didn't mean to. So that's when it, this did. thing got sappy at that point. So to put this episode in context, she was jealous because she uh, they adopted these two brothers. Um, Nell called his character, uh, uh, adopted these two brothers. And uh, she works as the kind of the housemaid for that family. And... Uh, she said, so he was performing in church that day. She sent mm -hmm. him there. The sister sent him there in blackface mm. in the in front of this whole black congregation. This uh. little white boy shows up with blackface, not knowing what the hell he's doing. And so this that's how this scene opens up. But I I just love I love Nell so much. I love the scene, but it was uncomfortable watching her because she had started out as the best friend of the mother who passes away, who comes to help the father 
uh, right. with his daughter. And that's how the the TV show series opens up. And then halfway through the season, it switches and she becomes the foster mother to the two boys and she moves to New York with her friend. So because of a lot of the controversy around the show, they revamped the show because the show went on for a number of years and did very well. But watching it now, I could see why, like my mother didn't like this show. Um, my, my grandmother didn't like this show. It was just me and my great grandmother that would watch it. And it was really hard watching it with people not liking it and me being young and not understanding it. I understand mm-hmm. it now. But she um, she was stereotypically the mammy, and many people looked at it that way. They didn't see it how she took care of this family, but they only would see it as her being the mammy. And I, I think her career suffered after this TV show a lot because of her being on it. Unlike Benson, who was able to grow in the role and, and kind of sit on top of him being him having integrity, she got the exact opposite treatment. And I think because she was a black woman, that's why she got treated that way. But what did y'all think of the show? <laughs> First of all, that clip. <laughs> that, oh yeah. But it wasn't a lot of racial issues in that series. They didn't deal with race at all. No, from what I remember, it, I mean, you know, they did deal, dealt with a lot of the things like the kids were going through mm-hmm. from what I can remember about the show. Um, I mean, it was a it was a good show. I used to watch it. Mm-hmm. I guess at that point, but you know, you said something about her being a stereotypical mammy. It's like okay, she, the mammy, and then she's the the big loud black woman. You know right. what I mean? So it's yeah. like, I it's we have. It seems like they try to give us no middle ground or yeah. any other kind of things Extremes. that we can. Yeah, yeah, it's like you're either going to be a yes ma'am or you're going to be big and loud. Like, yeah. those are your options. And yeah. like you were saying about how Benson got to elevate after, you know, being the butler and she didn't. It's mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, well, here's another black woman, you know, like not being able to. Right. And this was the 80s. Further. Her show right. was the mid 80s. His show was the late 70s. So mm-hmm. just wow. see, like, and, and the the argument that women have that they are still behind the black man, even this right. is a prime example of that. Right. So, like, that's why I mentioned the patriarchy mm-hmm. issue early in the episode when I we were talking about the difference between Dave Chappelle and and Monique. Because right. while I can give all credit f- to Monique for being the first major, you know, artist in that on that level. To, right. to break out and say, you know, now you're gonna pay me what I'm worth, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and I can I can absolutely draw a line of how, how that lays the groundwork for what we just recently saw with Dave Chappelle, right? Right. But the reality is that Dave Chappelle may have got his way, you know. What I mean, Sans Monique is mm-hmm. very possible simply because you know patriarchy a lot uh, play, plays a role in a, right. in a lot of these, right? So, like, the demands coming from a man in general seem to hold more weight than demands coming from a woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And that, that's a whole other issue that particularly black women have to deal with because they have to they have to try to maneuver the racial and the patriarchal. And she was just um, as big of a star as uh, as the... Uh, as name Vincent? Yeah, she was a she right. was a Broadway star. She was a singer. Right. She did movies. She was just as big of a star. Now she yeah. had problems that that he didn't have, but she was still just as they was equal. But at the same time, she came off as the white mammy, and he was the intelligent, intellectual black man. And right. well, let me ask you something, yo. Like, how often, like? Uh, do you think that maybe that caricature, that archetype gets overused at times? Like anytime we see, you know, but it's I, us. Like, it's I feel our like there's a point where it becomes merged with the token black, right? Yeah. Like it, it just becomes this thing where like, okay, if it's one black person amongst the cast of whites or other races, then it, it almost like it's assumed that that's the role. Yeah, it, it right. yeah, but it's it. What's sad to me, it comes from us. We can't blame white people for us feeling this way. 
Yeah, yeah, it no, sounds I mean, crazy, but it just we have to stop being so embarrassed by where we came from. And right now, council culture to me is a part of it is I want to erase anything that makes me look less than. Right. Mm-hmm. And that you cannot change history. History is what it is going to yeah. be. You I can't even say, really change yo, the future. I, it so, is, go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. I, let me. No, I, go, I, ahead, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because I, I, so, so my only rebuttal is to that is when. When it comes to stuff like that, like if we look outside of the individual black person that's involved, mm-hmm. are we canceling? Like when black people say, when when black people take that position, right, of the mm-hmm. like cancel this, cancel that because of X, Y, and Z, right? I often find myself at odds. I'm wondering, like, are we canceling the individual black person? Or are we canceling the image? This work of art or this this project, this this entity that just doesn't portray us in an honest light, right? Yeah. Like the, right. the the thing is all the way back to Hattie McDaniel, right? We were so much more than just their nurses and their butlers and their yeah. mammies. Like we had whole real full lives. Right, yeah, and because right. white people didn't give a fuck about that, when it came time to put those lives in in art, mm-hmm. they didn't have any frame of reference because the only the only on the only way they knew us was as oh the butler or the, the slave help. or yeah. the the help or yeah. my 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 um my my man or my woman who who you know yeah. is at my beck and call. Right. Yep. So the, the question really becomes is like, what are we canceling? Are we canceling the actors and actresses who took these roles? Or they become we, the innocent bystanders. Canceling, right. I think and I and I and that's my thing. I mm-hmm. think that they just become the the innocent bystanders or collateral uh-huh. of us saying that no, we're not gonna let you promote this shit because you ain't do right by us. And when, right. and when we right. say that, we just saying that like, yo, like, all right, you can have one or two movies because we not, we not, we're not ignorant of the fact that a lot of us were butlers and servants, right? But we had whole full lives that y'all didn't even care to like research. Like you can go across seas, you can go to other countries and you can research all types of shit mm. to, to try to bring a realistic work of art in a film. Right. But when it comes to black people, y'all get lazy, right? Like y'all okay. only want to rely on what y'all know in y'all immediate vicinity, right? So you mm-hmm. grew up with a black maid, so like you become a screenwriter or a filmmaker, <laughs> and that's the only way that you can view black folk, right? Instead of bringing your ass to the ghetto and doing what you do when you research any other topic that you want to write about, and. That's where I'm like, I get it. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, and 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 I typically I will support it, right? Because like I can I can accept a gun with the win, but then when you take all of the films that portrayed a black character in the 1930s, right? I'm not taking all of them. I'll take Gone yeah. with the Wind because she won the Academy Award. It was like the pinnacle of like there was some success that attached particular to it. role, and it was like right. written and portrayed in its best. Mm-hmm. By her, so I'll take that. But the rest of that shit got to go. He said he's not taking no more. The rest of that, <laughs> yeah, but, but at the but same you're not time, bring a whole legacy into yeah. the future of my people just being nothing but your help because we yeah. have lives. <clears throat> but you have to understand that it goes beyond the set. It goes beyond the TV set. It goes the studio. Those people. Like the Hattie Medaniel character, um, we talked about in the first season in the TV series Hollywood, um, where how she was depicted and how she, that one character, you know, I know plenty of actresses who look to Hattie McDaniel as like the person who broke through. So she had to do those things in right. order to be seen as so a Lena Horn and a Dorothy Dandridge and now a Whoopi Goldberg and a Angela Bassett and so on and so forth mm-hmm. can sit on top of it. Had she not did that, we would have still been playing those characters right now. 
or we would have still been offered those roles right now had she not been excellent in it. So we can't erase any of those people. Even in this movie, we saw Butterfly McQueen. Mm -hmm. She then went on and did that consistently. Dorothy Dandridge, her career was based off her mother being one of those main characters in movies and her not wanting that for herself. But had her mother not been able to do that, we wouldn't have known Dorothy Dandridge. We wouldn't have, Dorothy Dandridge. We wouldn't have yeah, gotten I think her. it's a double edged sword. I, I like mm-hmm. I get it. Like my my thing is like I want to support black people in their to in in, in all of them uh-huh. and whatever they do. Right. But I, my question wasn't about it like and I guess I guess what you're saying is like and 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 this is my quandary, like how do we balance that? How do we juxtapose that, right? Because do better now. Do uh, better now. Be well, more no, I'm united about, now. Well, 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 hold on. I think we are doing better now. Like, well, I, I mean, that's the that, answer to it, though. Um, but we have but to I do think it together. It's about how we how we honor and ch- how how do we handle that problematic history, right? Like, I, mm-hmm. that's what I'm talking about. By doing better now. That's that's the that's the we have to give respect and honor to those individuals. But we have to we as a unit have to do better now with each other. And we have to stand united so we're not being, you know, so Monique doesn't have that argument anymore. And we right. aren't at a space of we are so successful and we can treat a Monique like that. No, because her argument isn't with one of, none of those white people that was associated with Precious. It was all the black people that were. That's right. who our gripe is with. Because they got to a certain level where they didn't have to respect the black characters anymore. Because in all honesty, Monique got treated like a Hattie McDaniel. Ain't no way in the world you will pay this lady $50,000 and expect her to go around the world and work. And you're not, right, and you're not going to give her or write into your contract to say, well, you know what, let's let's give her a couple extra dollars so because she is going to go across seas and promote this. And it has, you know, been such an excellent, portrayal but not to make this about monique but i must stand for monique but (laughs) but in terms for you jay looking at give me a break what did now in that role represent to you or how did that affect how you became an actress um well like you said she started off on broadway so i you know Mm -hmm. i I was familiar with her with that Mm -hmm. but now carter she was a powerhouse you know what i mean like even even on give me a give me a break it wasn't one of those milly mouth kind of women or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So while she still were in, she was still in the position of being the 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 caretaker of the children. Mm-hmm. She wasn't she wasn't no chump, you know what I mean. Right. So it wasn't right. like one of those things where she mm-hmm. was a Hattie McDaniel or she was an Odessa where she had to be milly mouthed or yeah. kind of keep her thoughts to herself. So it was nice to see you know a sister in that in that light where she's able to really express herself Mm -hmm. but i'm gonna be very honest with you like it took me a long time to even try to watch the help because i got i got tired like that portrayal and i know you know it's based on a book and all this good stuff and it ended up being it ended up being a good movie but it was one of those things where it's like i'm so tired of seeing us in this gray and white uniform (laughs) cleaning up somebody else stuff taking care of somebody else's house and still having to take care of us. You know what I mean? So it's like that right. ongoing cycle of portraying or showing that the black woman is always taking care of everything and right. everybody, mm-hmm. you know, trying to heal everybody and everybody else's problems kind of thing. So, but look so you at never it, looked at it like it was just a job. I mean, that's what it, I mean, I think that would be the obvious. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but, but like that's I mean, I mean, typically we don't knock people for the jobs that they take. We do. That's the problem. Do we? We do. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like if you I mean, I feel like in the in the context of this conversation, it's like, especially when it's a biopic and you like, oh, I, I can't watch this shit because it's another biopic, but like that's just something that people did to get by. Like that it was very limited opportunities at the But time. see, I think today when we watch a help or the butler, or 12 Years a Slave. The difference Mm -hmm. now is our story is being told. It's just through the lens of what was. So it looks very similar, but now you see, like 12 Years a Slave was really based off of accounts of Abraham Lincoln and his wife's 
relationship. That was and, and understanding that stories are now being told, things are being uncovered. And what we see now in the Maiden Butler stories, we now see, oh, well, well she had a whole family. Damn. She was right. she was walking three and four miles just to take care of somebody else's family, but she went home and did the same thing. Oh, okay, damn. She wasn't just this person that we thought lived because for Hattie McDaniel and uh, Gone with the Wind, people was like, well, where did she live? Like, did she live in the house? Did she live in the slave quarters? Like, where did she live? And we're now in these movies understanding the 360, the behind the scenes of what those earlier movies did not show us. Mm -hmm. I think that is the difference. So in us looking at it as I'm tired of saying another, no, but this person's story is being told now. That's the difference. Versus yeah. it just being yeah, they are more, they are they are more robust stories, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and like and 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 much more fleshed out stories. So somewhat from the butler to the house, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now we are in control of telling those stories. Now it's mm-hmm. not just these white production companies or white writers telling our stories. Right. That's right. still happening. But now we have a bigger role in us being able to not only tell our stories and be in our stories, but also writing and not rewriting history, but writing the truthful, well-rounded addition to the history story. But that was give me a break. And uh, let's just watch. Let's let's normalize watching for content value, not just the acting value, but just watching and just seeing history play itself out on these TV shows and movies. Um, I'm not a fan of the laugh track, and I think a lot of the laugh tracks harmed shows like Give Me a Break uh, because it just made stuff funny that wasn't necessarily Explain the laugh funny. track, Nate. Uh, well, the laugh track <laughs> normally, the laugh track normally happens when they don't have a studio audience um and it normally is where we supposed to laugh at the people mm-hmm. were so arrogant to tell us where we should laugh at and that's kind of what the where the laugh track came at and we still hear it a little bit today not mm-hmm. as much um we probably go hear it for the next couple of years because all these shows that have been taped don't have audiences in them. Audience. uh but the laugh track was something that went along with a lot of the the tv shows just to add in that atmosphere when it wasn't a live studio audience. Okay. But thankfully, a lot of shows are going against that and not doing it anymore. But um, uh, we're making good time. We're making good time. We're not trying to rush y'all, uh, but uh, we got a, a mama on duty tonight. But uh, to <laughs> I was about our, to say, y'all got me up way past my bedtime. <laughs> our, last, our last movie, uh, I picked this one because it kind of put in the, you know, that classical movie era. Um, and it's, it's actually, I don't think this was my mother's favorite movie, but I think uh, with my mother growing up being so fair-skinned, I think this had a special connection to her story. Okay. Um, and this was uh, Imitation of Life. There are two different versions of this movie, um, and I suspect that somebody's going to eventually make this movie now. I think for some reason, this will be a movie that I don't mind people doing a remake of because mm-hmm. I think it deals with colorism in a way that we need to hear it as black people or people. Of I don't color. think it's going to happen. I don't know. And but, if it's done, I don't think it's going to be done right. Uh, I don't it's know. The only, the- Frankie, you're late. I so we see the tragic mulatto being played by a white woman. Let's walk down by the river. I want to talk to you. We can talk here. Frankie, I'm... I'm having trouble at home. Your mother? Yes. Frankie, you said you wanted to take a job in Jersey. Couldn't we run away? I'd do anything to be with you. Anything. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. Just tell me one thing. Yes? Is it true? Is what true? The film is your mother a nigger. Mm. Tell me. Tell me! What difference does it make? You love me. All the kids talking behind my back. Is it true? No. 
yellow. Are you black? No, I'm as white as you. You're lying. I'm not. You're lying. I'm not. Oh, uh, I ain't fucking with none of that at all. None of it. I'm so glad. Like I, I like I told y'all, I hadn't seen none of these projects. So when mm. I, when I, when I, uh, when I did my little Amazon Fire Stick <laughs> in the kitchen of life, and I literally was, li- I was sitting there you know, for like 30 minutes trying to figure out which one. I almost text you, like which one. Uh-huh. I'm so glad. That's why I, I didn't say anything because I'm I was so like, I wanted y'all to choose. Because I saw the 1934 version. Okay. So I got some things to say about that. But just based off, so I it's haven't the same, seen. They're typically the same movie. There nah, were they a not. few different. Nah, they not. I mean, I can tell you from this scene right here. No, they not. Don't even. Uh, no, no, that. But I'm the premise. The premise is similar. But this <laughs> understand, but that ain't happening in the in the in the 1934 version. And right, and that's what I'm saying. Put did the not historical context. Have a white actors playing um, um, the fair skinned black woman. Well, in the uh, the first the original one, it wasn't. That wasn't. She may have been mixed, but she wasn't like. Well, I'll just say she was mixed. I'm just saying she was played <laughs> by a white actress. Well, just just look at. This well, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll go get ahead, to that. Let's, let's, so, let's, what? Tell me. Uh, we'll start with Jay. What did you? Had you seen either version before? So this is the version that I've seen before. Okay. Trash. And this <laughs> we'll it won all the awards. The other version. It won all the awards. This shit was trash. <laughs> then I'm gonna have to go watch the other one. Mm-hmm. Wait, but, hold on. Which one you talking about? The one that you said. You said this did you watch the Oh no, I'm talking about this about 59 that. colorized oh. version. Yeah. Trash. Yeah. <laughs> but I've seen that one. Um, for me, I know personally not. Personally, for me, but like you know, my mom and my grandma are like mm-hmm. transparent. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like their yeah. their skin tone is transparent, and they might be like the lightest people in the family. Right. You know, so and I know that my mom has mentioned things about growing up, and you mm-hmm. know, people telling her that she thinks she's better than them because she's mm-hmm. light skin and things of that nature. But just to have your, for me as a parent looking at it now versus when I was a you know, a young adult mm-hmm. watching it to have your child not want to be your child because they feel as though what you yeah. do and how you look is so beneath everyone else, you know? So from that standpoint, I, I watched it a little differently this time because it was like, okay, you know, I have children and to have your child just belittle you like you're nothing because you clean up after somebody else because you watch somebody else's child and because you're dark was it but was it and and it's interesting because as adults we begin to then see things differently and the fact that you now have children you're looking at what if your daughter did that to you right and so it, it makes you look at the movie differently but and i'm not i've never defended uh the young lady who plays that character, but it's it's hard to not have some level of compassion. Look how he treated her when he found out. Like we can't forget that these people did have horrible because people treated them a certain way because they looked a certain way, and then when they found out, they then treated them. So they got it from both sides, you know. And that idea of being yeah. the tragic mulatto. They still have a story, but it is very tragic that they often chose to live on that side versus this side. Mm. But can we blame them? Like, you know, her mama was good to her, but was anybody else good to her when they right. found out? You know, and it is it, it's, it's hurtful because even in my family, I have two I have two twin cousins and they were mixed. And I remember their nickname was white, well, white boy and white girl. They were, they, that was their name growing up. And so when we hear stories, we read Mariah Carey's 
uh, autobiography. We see Trevor Noah's book. We understand what their perspective is. And I think people don't look at it. Only they look at it for the fact of I don't want to be black. And it's so much deeper than that. Like, could you imagine growing up and not know where you belong or how you should carry your life? But this right. movie was, it was heartbreaking because of how she treated her mother. It was, uh, it was so, just that last funeral scene alone just takes me out every single time I see this movie. Her crying on the back of the carriage. Yeah. Yes. 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 With Mahalia playing, singing in the back. It's, yes. It's it's too much. It's too, it's way too much. What year did Gone with the Wind come out? Mm, that was like the late thirty one. Was that forty? I think that was like no, I, early forty. I thought that was in thirties. Okay, I, I could be wrong. All right, so Hattie McDaniel was the first woman to win an Academy Award, right? Mm-hmm. First black woman. Mm-hmm. So I saw the nineteen thirty four version of Imitation of Life, right? And Louise Beavers should have yeah. got all the flowers that yeah. Hattie McDaniel got. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, um, I haven't. I read about the remake or the second imitation of life. I, yeah. I did not have the time to watch both of them, so mm-hmm. I chose the 1934 version. You should, I mean, watch this one when you. I'm gonna watch it. I'm, I'm gonna check it out. Just, just, uh, juxtaposition, like, I, I, I want to watch yeah. it now just to compare it to the original, but yeah. I, I. I enjoyed <laughs> that movie. I was actually, again, like with Vincent, oh. um, I was very surprised by the way that they handled the characterizations in the in that film. For yeah. and especially, and I was really just surprised because it was I under like that movie came out in 1934. Okay, so I was really surprised because I didn't think films like that existed where. Black it characters were given substantial screen time, right? Um, and were integral to the whole entire plot. Um, mm-hmm. so and 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 I know that the fifty nine and thirty four versions are very uh, they are different in the sense of like just what they're based around. Like the thirty four plot is simpler. Um, it's almost the story of Aunt Jemima. Like mm-hmm. that, that was that was yeah. uh, what my sons kept saying when we were watching the film. Like, is she Aunt Jemima? Because yeah. you know, it's a white woman who uh, she runs. She her business is she sells maple syrup. Yeah, and then this black woman comes into her life by accident. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you, it is very clear that, and I, I know that a lot of black people are going to be turned off because it's very clear that the black character is um what i think a lot of people would characterize as like a simpleton like a simple mm-hmm. not um, in her mannerisms or like it wasn't overt it was just clear that she wasn't that uh intellectually bright right like it, it wasn't that she um it wasn't anything in the characterization so to speak so like those tropes that we normally see like from uh, Butterfly McQueen and and Gone with the Wind, it was none of that. It was just understood that she may have come from like very very humble beginnings and or surroundings, and then mm-hmm. certain things were just a miss on her. Um, so this white woman makes maple syrup, and this black woman comes into her life and plays the role of her her maid. Right, she's looking for work. And she makes pancakes. Mm -hmm. And they go into business together. And this movie spans like 30 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, 15, Mm -hmm. at least, at least 20, at least 15. Um, It's actually longer than that, I believe. Yeah, it it spans like the daughters go from meeting, like both of them have a daughter, Mm -hmm. and they go from children to full grown adults. So Right. I know that the movie spans at least 20 years, right? Mm-hmm. And they live together the whole time. And in the 34 right. version, the racial aspect between these two main black female characters mm-hmm. is never even really discussed beyond the tension between 
the mother and the daughter, the black mm -hmm. mother and the mulatto daughter, who was very fair skinned. Right. Um, I just, I didn't know that I really was shocked because, you know, I watched all of these films thinking that I was going to see the, the basic step in fetching character characterizations mm -hmm. of what we say when we talk about we tie the people playing the mammy and the butler and right. all that stuff. Right. And to find that a lot of these films were it, it I just got the sense that they were trying, right? Like mm -hmm. I, don't, say I, ain't never gonna, I ain't never gonna give white white supremacy a pass on shit. <laughs> but uh like I'm gonna be clear, I'm gonna be honest about <laughs> shit at the same time, right? I'm not just gonna lump everything. I like I saw some shit like I felt like Benson they were trying like like somebody had to make the decision that like yo we we gonna try to do this differently than it's been done before. I'm right. I'm, uh, I'm 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 stuck I saw on that trying. in imitation of life. Uh huh. Um, I, but I, I don't see where well, I feel like it was an intentional thought process of like right. how do we handle this? I'm I'm uncomfortable with the word trying. I'm gonna be honest mm -hmm. because I think. There was a a deliberate uh, attempt to tell a story, um, but notice in all of these stories, uh, and even in the original, because I I I didn't like the original because of the whole uh, <laughs> pancake and Jamama kind of reference. I didn't. Oh, I just like didn't. in 1934, was Aunt Jamama around? I don't know how yeah. far back Aunt Jamama actually goes. So I didn't know. We like the question in my house was like, wait, did this movie that Aunt Jamama inspire this film, or did this film inspire I Aunt Jamama? Jamama. I, I, I really didn't know. Would, if you can try to <laughs> look it up like, real yo, quick before what was we her get name? off. Aunt, her name was Aunt. Um, and uh, uh, like, like the whole. It was not Jamama nothing. It was. It wasn't Jamama. No, <laughs> no. Jamama, but I was just saying, like, Jamama nothing. If you remember in the first well, version, they the had the little, they had the advertisement. Like they eventually boxed her pancake formula. Yeah. And and it was like it was literally was like Aunt Jamama, but it was yeah, Aunt whatever her name was, right? Like, but uh, the, but I think the attempt was to tell because these were real stories, right. like the Aunt Jamama. Backstory was a real story. It just mm -hmm. was contorted to what commercial uh, success it had. Like it just got changed, and that way, just for commercial purposes. But other than that, it it these were real stories. So I don't I don't want to give white people like a like any credit for like trying. You know, like the Norman Lears and like I I, I get what they were doing, but. And them being risque, it was dollars and cents to them. It right. wasn't about them telling our story because often we still was in the backseat of our story. And 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 we we speak about either version, but that version, this lady got rich over this. Wasn't nobody buying that damn syrup until she mixed some pancakes with her. So the fact that you know she got very wealthy. Off oh, of her. this black lady, and then we don't realize how how much even the lady had until she died, and we see this huge funeral that was probably paid for by the money she saved by living with this lady her whole life. Right. You know, so, we like, she didn't have to live with her, but but that was her that was like her only wish. It was uh, it was the whole idea of when slavery and ended. Then, and people, then the people all, that stayed then, at the plantation. That's uh, that's what we see. What'd you say? It, it's like that the day slavery ended, and they was like, "Well, you can leave or you can stay and be a stack proper." Yeah, like and it, that's what yeah, she did. That was that was that was that was that was tough to watch. Yeah, that was tough to watch. Like trying to get her to sign the papers, um, and her being more focused on the the separation. Then change. right, a, she had an issue with the so change. Like, like I had an issue with that one, right? Like I had an issue with this idea that like you can't exist outside of this white woman. But they don't. They, I mean, look at her life when they met. When the version you watch when they met on the beach, look at where her life probably was at that moment. But she didn't, didn't have a stable life. So, well, I think I was. I'm thinking about the one I watched, but uh, the yeah. meeting on the yeah. beach, like. The meeting like that, like look at where her life was before. 
now she has a mink stole and you know little trinkets and gifts that she bought with her hard work and money that she earned but she she was given it was given to her as a gift and shit like that but i think more so just what was her what this ability that her life became i'm not saying this was an excuse but you know look at you know equate that to section 8 right now people comfortable in that space because what's the what's the you know, I can't see success. I see me not having a roof over I, I my head. I can't go with that analogy, Nate. Like, anybody, well, that's the same. anybody on Section no, 8 I'm, who wins the lottery is getting the fuck up out of there. They yeah, not, but they, they have, they not they have to. Yeah, like, that's, but, that's not even going to happen. It's not like no, you have not, $100 million in the bank, but we yeah, going to stay in Section 8. But that, no. that then becomes their life because they, they see it. They 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 have something in their hand to go with, but mm. some people still will stay in the hood. Nah, I, I don't, I don't, no, I don't. I, they may not live in Section Eight anymore because legally they can't, but they may stay in that neighborhood. Well, staying in staying in the hood is I, I think that's a bad analogy. Staying in the hood, like if you outside of the hood, you probably got a really really negative connotation in the hood of the hood. But the truth oh, of the no, matter is, is like not what I meant by that, but. Well, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that it was it was less about it was less about her location than it was. It was it was very clear. It was it was very clear that she did not it she did not seem to understand her her situation at this point, and the under the misunderstanding or her inability to understand seem to be incredibly tied into this idea of not understanding that she could have an autonomous life outside of this right. white person. But she um, just, I, I mean, it wasn't just really, to, to me, it, it never came off as like this conscious decision so much as a lack of understanding. Uh, you know what I mean? But but what if she chose it? But would it be well, so she did choose she chose it. it? No, I'm saying, you're saying that she didn't understand, but what if she did understand? And she said, you know what? I'd rather stay here well, and where not, I have you know, security okay. versus venture that's, that's, out that's, to the world and get back to where I was when but I that first was the thing, like, but but okay, so so remember like when we first started talking, I kind of prefaced this with like she was introduced to someone who was not that in- intellectually astute, right, right from the beginning. Before any of this other th- stuff comes into play, her character is kind of introduced as someone who is lacking on the 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 intelligence side. Mm, oh, I don't, I don't so like that led me that to believe that you know, and and a lot of it could have just been because of conditioning, not a not a not a, a a general lack of understanding of what it means to have money, but like she didn't seem to understand. When she was trying to tell her that, like, yo, you have your own money now. It doesn't mean that you got to go away. It just means that you can have your own. Like, because, like, she wasn't running her away from the business. She was telling her, you're now, you're a partner in this business. Mm. This is your cut. And because of how well we're doing, it means that you can afford your own house, your own car. You don't have to live with me. It doesn't mean that you got to go somewhere. Like, you don't have to. (laughs) <laughs> fly away because we. But I don't think that's. I, 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 think, business. I think it's easy to say because she didn't understand because she she may not have understood that amount of money. Like right now, for any of us to hold a million dollars, we all know what we would do with a million right. dollars. But it You're still right. seems like a million. I, I think it was money. lazy. I think it was just lazy writing, and it, I, I to me it came and off as what I was. At, but how we look at people from that moment like we just we you could not you had to been less intelligent to not take the money and run or not understand what you had in your hand uh, no i'm not saying take the money i'm not i'm not saying take the money and run nate what i'm saying is that i think that there was in the characterization of that scene it seemed Mm -hmm. like there was a lack of understanding of what Type of situation she was in and but what it meant for her. Both of those characters but I also, in the framework of character. white supremacy, I found like it was laziness in the writing. Mm-hmm. If you want to keep these two characters together, I thought it was very telling about where the white mind frame was and bringing right. it back to like these underwritten characters because uh, you could have come up with several different motivations for her to stay outside of this like 
oh, I want to stay with you because oh, yeah. I don't quite I don't have anything else to do. Right, because right. I don't else. have anything. But the thing is, like, it, I, I could have almost accepted that if they had introduced these two characters have as always having been together, but they did. Okay. They introduced in the in the 1934. I'm not sure what happens in the 59 version. It's, that's why I said in the, the 1934 version, version this black woman life. shows up at her door literally by mistake. Yeah, well, th- well, both both movies show she was surviving before she met other. her, right? Like she was fine before they met. Uh-huh. So it really kind well, of portrayed she? that later in the film when she has this opportunity not to leave the character. Just to create like an independence for herself apart from her, right? And they but, characterize it as if she did not understand the concept. It, uh, but, but I think they were trying to portray humility versus buffoonery. I think that was, in my opinion, that's how I always looked at it. It wasn't necessarily a lack of understanding, but she, you may think she was doing fine, but. Look at this child she was walking around with. That's not right. doing fine. You put yourself in a situation where you have a child that is of a race that's in addition to yours. Like so, I think that her both movies show them randomly connecting. It was a random connection. Okay, you know, I think in the first one it was more so her looking for a job versus. The second one, they were on a beach and they just ran into each other. Yeah. But I think it. I think it. I don't think it was less about her being a buffoon as her being them trying to portray her as this humble creature who was just satisfied with, you know, a, a nice place to live that was consistent and safe for her and her child. Okay. I think that's what the consistency was in terms of what she was portrayed as. I think it's easy to look at these characters and like, girl, you take that money and get your ass on and do what you gotta do. <laughs> well, no, like, yo, like, like, here's the thing. And and I, I want to be very clear about this. That's mm-hmm. not what I'm saying. I understand. Um, I, understand. I, I was just really upset because she didn't even sign the contract, right? right. Like, it, right. It, 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 it came down. She distrusted to, that white lady. Thank, thankfully, this white woman wasn't on no shiesty shit. And was like, I'll just have to, you know, I'll just have to put your your portion in the bank because I don't believe it was 50 50. So I right. think she was saying, no, it wasn't. It was twenty percent. It was twenty percent. And it was all hard work. At that but point, think- at that point, it was three of them. It was three of them. Mm-hmm. And I think she took she took the the white woman like uh, she took the larger portion. It wasn't 50 50, but. It was it was I see however so. it was split. Right. It was like twenty percent between the twenty here. Right. right, right, yeah. So you don't really need it, so you can just take this. But you I, just right. paying, I think you just paying was, your tithes and offers. You can just I think take it was this twenty, twenty, and sixty. <laughs> but they were making so much money that that twenty percent was worth. Like she's like, yo, you're gonna be a millionaire. Right. <laughs> well, they, well like, that's what you find out at the end of both of the <laughs> movies. How much money she had saved up, right? So when the daughter finds out that she left this to me, like she was thinking about me this whole time, the whole time. and the whole I treated time. her this way, like that's yeah. the part that chokes me. Like I still get that lump in my. Was that the fifty nine version? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause see, yeah. in the thirty four version, there is no discussion about what she left to her daughter. It was just like, assumed. You, 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 you see her impact by her through her funeral. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, like, a, that's like the it, same in both it movies. Was, yeah. it, because it, it was like, in, in, in the 34 version, it was like a big procession. It was nothing but yeah. black people. Like, it was very, it became very clear that she was very important, like, in the black community. So that's why I say it doesn't, it's not so much about her not understanding. She was a humble creature. Like, they both were, both of the versions, they show this lady as a very connected to her church type of woman. Mm-hmm. Like, right, right. So, that, so that's yeah, why she's that not was, really impressed by a lot. Right. She did she wasn't impressed by the money. I I didn't stay this whole time and help you with raising your child while I raised mine because you were paying me. Because that lady wasn't being paid. <laughs> she she got that's why she got the money because that lady knows she wasn't paying her that whole time. She just offered her a home. That was right. it. So, you know, she stayed because she had a home. Because if she was doing well, you know, where's the father? Where's the father to this mulatto child? Where's, you know, 
She wasn't, that girl, was, she was searching for a job in a place that would accept her and this child. And that was the first home, I think, in both versions that that lady just didn't talk about this little mulatto child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was pretty much like, okay, I, I know what the deal is here. Let me just, you know, I'm going to get a free babysitter out of this. And that's what it is. But <laughs> this movie really, I, I love it only because it always makes me think of my mother. Um, and I think I think there should be a new version of this movie. I just don't want it, you know, I think the young lady who played Nina Simone, this is what you should have been doing instead of trying to play Nina oh, Simone. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, but I, I think I think it would help us because I, I've always said, um, you know, somebody my complexion, I've never really, really dealt with you know, colorism, I think is normally the lighter skin, like the two of you and like my mom and, and then the darker skin people, but somebody, my complexion, we like, well, what the hell are y'all fighting for? Like, mm -hmm. like we see it, but you're like, aren't we all just a shade? But I think th to understand it, I think we should, but in this one, please don't cast a white lady and try to pass her off as mixed. This don't, just don't do it. I know it's possible, but don't do it. You know, just 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 cast correctly. Find yourself a mixed race person and and do it. And but we have more shows now that are we have mixish. That's with the uh, uh, Diana Ross's daughter. That's going to be the next spinoff to Grownish. Um, so I think we have more reference points now to people being of mixed race. But this was a very uh, controversial attempt to show that type of love. But this is what white people do. They cast themselves in every other culture but their own, including their own. Uh, and this was a really horrible attempt to, for me in both versions of portraying what uh, a mulatto person's journey is and then how it... Because it, it, it then became about the love life of Lana Turner and the second mm -hmm. one. And the, uh, like it, it still became about them. It was their story that they took over, but uh, I I absolutely love the just the lineup of movies we had today, and I think we should just start looking at movies not on whether we like them or not, but just start really going a little bit deeper with the context, you know, the historical value, the social impact that it has, and then culturally, what does these films do to us? You know, well, how you can did just listen to binge worthy podcasts and. Well, Take us you know, work. <laughs> that's what you should do. But no, I still want you to watch yo, like, I feel you and I wish everybody could do that. But I think when you're not a cinephile, I think it's really difficult to like repeatedly or sit back and like really right. try to like delve into movies that you genuinely don't like or like genuinely just don't do it for you for whatever reason. Um, like you, like you not liking the Wiz, like for that example, like that's that's who, what you when did I say I ain't like the Wiz. You you just, you're just gonna take my comment and run it all the way around the block. I ain't never in life say I didn't like the Wiz. Just because I got some critical things to say about the Wiz, do not mean that I don't like it. It is still a very much staple in my house. We watched it on Thanksgiving. Like, go ahead with that, Dre. <laughs> no, but but I, but, but, I, I, but, but I think it, I think that. that when you're not into, if you're not particularly like like we love film, we love this art form, we love acting. The three of us, right. it's I, I think it's a little easier for us to sit and watch movies that like might turn us off the first time around and mm -hmm. be like, let me watch this again. You right. know what I'm saying, like. Because I, I think that for us, there's value in that, right? Like truly mm -hmm. understanding and trying to figure out where a filmmaker was coming from, why certain actors and actresses made certain choices, and then understanding the backstory and how things came together. Like, you know, I watched this whole, like, I didn't see the clip you mentioned about that was like uh, attached to the beginning of Gone with the Wind, and I watched it on HBO Max. But what I did, mm -hmm. and maybe it was one of them, there were two like extra clips that you could watch yeah um but you had to click on them i didn't click on the three minute one i clicked on the hour long one and it was like a panel discussion yeah at a film fest at the turner classic movies film festival where right so that first clip is the lady so that might have given some content and i just didn't watch it right like mm -hmm. um but i did watch the other one and it was about an hour long and it was uh it was four women and a guy 
as a moderator and and it was a, a panel discussion about like the historical context. So I learned a lot of things about the making of the film and uh-huh. um you know and while like I get what you're saying about like trying and like not really wanting to stand for that like it was very clear from what they were bringing up about the making of the film that they were trying to strike this delicate balance in Gone with the Wind between the novel and a res- like like trying to portray the the black characters in like as honest of a light as possible for that mm-hmm. time period right so like there was that whole discussion uh but i i just think like nah listen to binge worthy podcast and just like yo we're not gonna let you we're not gonna steer you wrong if you don't want to keep watching shit over and over again nigga. no we're gonna always put you on <laughs> Right, we're gonna put you onto some That's great right. pieces that you've seen, right. or we'll that we want you to re see. I do think if you haven't seen certain stuff, you and, and we, that we're discussing, like if you're listening to us and you haven't seen some of this, shit, some of the shit that we're talking about, you should definitely go back and check it out. Um, I didn't see, I had not seen any of this, I watched mm-hmm. all of this in preparation for this episode. And that's uh, that's and great. Very, very. I'm glad that that I did. Like I found a show that I know I'm. I, I really like, and that's Benson. Um, I found to go binge watch Benson. Huh? It's, it's it's pretty good. Like it lasts for seven years, so it's a lot for you to watch. Right, but I it know. is definitely it's good. You will really enjoy it because he's he's a smart black militant person, and it comes across in all of it. And you will be like, especially the fact that he is often the only black person in this whole TV show, and he's still talking to these white people like that. It's going yeah, for yo, nothing yo else. Talking, yo was talking to these white people. I was like, yo, this nigga crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like he, he was really giving it to him, like early. But this is Pearly. Nah, this is just, think about Pearly. It. When you mm-hmm. think when you watch this, this is like Pearly if it was a TV show. Gotcha. And just understand how it. Well, it's it's a little bit more extreme, but. This him he is pearly doing this. This pearly would talk to white people this way, right? So, uh, this has been another edition. I want to uh, before a binge ready podcast, but I wanted to uh, give some information on the vegan diva, the herbalist, the <laughs> vegan uh, diva herself, uh, and let us know where we can find you at where we because you're starting a new company. So let us give us some information, some insight. I am. Mm-hmm. I'm starting a um, loose herbal tea blend company. I'm currently Make on Facebook. <laughs> I'm currently on Facebook. <laughs> um, it's the Herbal Diva. That's the name of the page. Um, and we're going to be launching soon. Fingers crossed, March the 9th. And all that information will go out soon. Okay. I mean, or well, whatever. You know, I still haven't gotten a meal, but... You know, I've been all, cooking a I little bit cook myself. For you. I try to cook for you, and you're like, no, I don't eat this. And first, of all, first of all, I've been doing this for this last year. I Listen, actually I'm, I'm so proud of you. Today. I'm so proud of you. I'm. Let me just say that I really am. I'm very proud of you because I've seen the posts that you've been posting, right. and I'm very proud. And I see, I see you've been trying to take some of my recipes too, but it's cool. It's <laughs> cool. You made my, uh, you made my shepherd's pie, but it's cool. It's cool. Oh, yeah, but mine was better because I don't use cauliflower. I don't use hybrid vegetables. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it was still, mine was still good. It was still good. But, but um, also, I want you all to, if you go to the market, or if you go to a Walmart, look in the, the magazine section. Uh, Entertainment Weekly has a special collector's edition for Black History Month this month, and it's Black Film, a celebration of Black Film, a century of Black excellence. Uh, at the movies, and at, most of the movies we've had on the Ben's Ruggie podcast is in this magazine, and I was so pumped about that, um, including Carmen Jones uh, uh, and such, and movies of that nature, but <laughs> I was really... Shit now. Yeah, he just he just watched Carmen Jones for the first time, too. Like, we gotta... Come on, you gotta send him some movies, Jay, because... Oh, wait a minute. Gotta, I, wait a minute. I haven't watched that, so wait a minute. <laughs> I might need to... What in the... You know what? <laughs> <laughs> in a, I'm not even going to say it, but that in a white lady, you need to expand her horizons a little bit. But, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, I like to support things that are supporting us. And Entertainment Weekly did a whole edition this month, and it's a collector's edition of all these. And it's brief interviews. 
and they are across the gambit. They even got Medea on the front cover, so whatever. But uh, <laughs> but just go and support it. And don't forget August Wilson's uh, uh, stamp collection. He's a part of the Black Heritage Stamp Collection at the USPS uh, dot com, whatever. Uh, so go get that uh, and just support us. Like make us valuable and make the world see that we are valuable, so they can keep pushing things like this. I've never seen uh, Entertainment Weekly or any magazine do something like this, even for Black History Month. But it's a great thing. Um, some great interviews um, with Spike Lee as well. But uh, this has been the Binge Worthy Podcast. This wasn't four hours today, so we did All good. Right. <laughs> uh, but we don't forget every Tuesday at three PM. You'll see a fresh episode. We were just playing today with being live, but we had a couple of listeners. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, and y'all want to say goodbye or say uh, yes. any more? It's G. Oliver, I see y'all next week. Peace right. and blessings. Be safe. I'm ready. Uh...